Hello everyone, Trina here, and we're going to continue with Origins of Soul, and this is, I believe, 5.4, and uh, so far um, in this last chapter, we've done a lot of exploration of the different levels of the astral realms and the causal realms, and last but not least, the mental realms, so the, mind, the realms of mind. So we've been uh, talking a lot about how we are much more than our physical bodies. Our physical bodies are part of who we are now, but the eternal part of us is energetic. And those energy bodies are going to stay with us after we drop our flesh. And these energy bodies are strongly... Um, having a great effect upon what is manifesting within the physical. So um, it, 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 a lot of evidence is pointing to the fact that what we think about, we bring about. But the problem with this is most of us are bringing about our consciousness through programs. And those programs are deeply embedded into our subconscious mind which most of us don't have a lot of access to. And um, this is why you've got the big meditation hype going on and yoga and all of these spiritual practices. People are coming awake to this information because through these practices, you, you quiet the physical body, which is the beast or monster part of our nature. It's the primal part of us. It's the part that holds the bottomless pit, which is our stomach, because it's it's never going to be satisfied. It's going to need to feed until you die. So the, these, all these terminologies we've been taught to fear. It's like, oh, hell and bottomless pit and the bowels of hell and all of these things um, that have been so deeply put into our consciousness and in all actuality, it's just explaining the complex, the complex structure of the desires of our flesh and how these desires are primal to our, our existence. If they are not fed, you truly will drop your body, your body will die. So within this, our body has its own nature, its own construct, its own feelings, wishes, and desires. But the thing is, is that the key to the meditation, the key to enlightenment, all of these keys are truly, it's the battle between the flesh and the spirit. So, and the soul is, 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 is totally linked in between the two, uh, kind of just going along for the ride, absorbing information and processing and carrying with it the information that you um, you experience in this journey. and But the soul has the consciousness of all of your journeys and all of your existences. So within our soul, it seems the soul brings forth the light codes and the light codes go into the genetic code. And the genetic code is expressed in the physical body for the template. <clears throat> it seems to me that this is where we have the access to past life memories. Um, we can basically get into the Akashic records of our own cosmos. So with that, you have access to your libraries as well as the libraries of others. Um, I would never uh, suggest getting into the books of other people unless you specifically have their permission because um, this is a serious violation of privacy. So just to know that, that um, a lot of our hierarchical laws that are present upon this earth are present in the spiritual realms as well. So um, make sure when you guys do things, you always get permission from the other person if, if they're wanting you to look or see into their book. And always look for yourself 
Don't trust anybody to tell you about what's inside of you because you know what's inside of you better than anyone else will. Um, another concept that this the book Origins of Soul is speaking of is the angelic twin. And it's beautiful now because we can see angelic origins of soul. This is obviously the foundational message that she's trying to get across is that we are um, angelic first. And um, in the Bible it speaks of, you know, the fallen angels and the fall. Um, all of this is our descent from energy light beings into flesh bodies. So that is the fall. The fall is taking on flesh. The fall is coming into this world of matter. Matter and mother. Um, we, we have lost so much of what we are through <clears throat> this artificial construct that we see uh, that's filled us with information in the information that we have been receiving for thousands of years has been one to keep us away from seeking inner truth it's always teaching us to go outside of ourself to make ourselves happy uh, to um, feed the ego which the ego is strongly attached to our shadow and our shadow is strongly attached to the flesh so the shadow <clears throat> part of us and shadow work is is looking into um, trauma flesh trauma charges that you hold in your tissue the tissue that you have in your flesh body is a map of everything that you've experienced in this lifetime thus far and it also has memory of lifetimes before and even after. So as a multidimensional expressional being, you are existing on all timelines simultaneously at the same time. And I know that's a, it's super hard to wrap your brain around that because it's, I can't wrap my brain around it. It's too big. But um, time, time is not linear. It, it, it looks to me more like it's a circle and uh, their points, points of perception, literally perception, because you jump time and you jump dimensions through perception. If you change your mind, you will change your world because that's how it happens. You, you will go to where you're vibrating. So we truly are creating our worlds. We are truly manifesting all that we see and we have been programmed uh, through TV, media, religion, politics, education, all of these things. Um, we've been deeply programmed to stay away from what is true and what is real and what is eternal. And this place literally is an illusion. And I know it, it, it feels so real because it is real and we are real in flesh. But in, in essence, in the grander scheme of things, this is, this is like um, you put on a costume to go play a, a part in a movie. And this movie was going to run for X amount of years. And the director... And the screenwriter, the person who's writing the script, is you. And the person that's directing the play is you. And you are all the characters in this experience. And when <clears throat> this experience is over, you will look at this as if it was just like a movie literally a movie so the reason we are in flesh bodies i think is to experience the utter power of the five senses and being attached to 
nature in a in a system of entropy where things uh, break down and die you get to feel pain you get to feel sickness you get to feel dis-ease you get to feel anxiety you get to experience fear you get to experience loss you get to experience love joy bliss we get to experience everything in matter in the higher realms these uh, emotional expressions just don't exist because uh, thought travels with vibration. So what you vibrate at is a reflection of what you think in your mind, what you feel in your heart. So you are an expression of what you feel and think. So the feeling is the prayer. Greg Braden has it so right. The feeling is the prayer. When we feel about anything, we're manifesting it. And it's instant. And it's starting right then. The moment you feel something, you're sending out a signal to the universe to bring back a match. <clears throat> it's not magic. It's just physics because it's the way it works. The law of attraction is the same as the, um, the hermetic principles with cause and effect. These laws are solid and they truly work. And see, we've been so trained to go outside to look at all these things for what we need. And through that, we've let in a lot of uh, very smart, powerful, greedy people do a lot of harm to this planet and to the human species. So I think there's um, many ways to resolve this. But the first thing is, is that we have to reestablish our connection with what we came here to do. And that was to totally be immersed in nature. This construct gives us nature. It's one of the few that gives us nature in this form. So we came here to experience some of the densest layers and levels of matter and to connect to the beast. The nature, the nature of this system is one of entropy and death. And it is very primal. It is very uh, passionate. It is very raw. The emotions here are off the hook intense. Because see, we're used to experiencing very high emotions. In the realms of the energy bodies, there's very powerful high emotions. There's low emotions too. We still have polarity in the lower levels of the astrals. But once you get to the very, very high realms, your vibration is straight or you can't be there in the first place. But if your vibration is, is in the right place and you're in these higher realms, these lower vibrations, I mean, you have an awareness of them, but you can't, you can't feel them because they're not present in your field. You literally can't have access to them because they're not there. They're just not there. So, <coughs> sorry, getting over a cold. My daughter brought home a real fun one this time. So, gotta love kids. <laughs> so, um, um, all of this information that we're looking at has explained so many times over and over again that we, when we die, we don't die. So understanding that when you do not, you, you will not cease when you drop your physical body. You will exist on another dimension, in another plane of existence, and you will still be you. So people like think, oh, once I die, I'm going to go to heaven and I'm just going to know everything and I'm going to be instantly changed and enlightened and turn into this magnificent being of light. It's like, um, we are what we are. Your consciousness is your consciousness. So the only changing that your consciousness will experience is, is this the conscious shifting that you do. You shift your consciousness. You decide to control your thoughts. You decide to choose what you focus and think about every day. And it's a challenge because our programming has taught us to stay in the past. It's taught us to closely associate with the most uh, intense charges of our life and typically those are trauma-based. So um, 
we, we typically relive over and over and over again in, in, in anticipation for harm or trauma or, oh, I know they're going to do that to me because it's always happened every time. You know, all of these programs that are self-defeating negative talk, that is the Satan of this world. That's the accuser. That is the darkness of this realm. It's your own doubt. It's your ego. It's your shadow. It's the part of you that wants utter control. And it wants, um, it wants self-preservation and it wants acknowledgement. Um, my, the best way for me to under, to look at the ego is, um, like a two year old child. They, they finally looked in the mirror and have recognized self. They're like, Oh, that's me. I, I see me in the mirror and that's me. Oh, okay. They, they get, they get the whole me part, but then you ask them to, to share a toy and, and, and it's like, Oh no, that's my toy. That's because it feels like if it shares the toy, it's going to lose the toy. It doesn't understand that sharing is actually more fun because it's just understanding its own self. And this is the thing. When we get brought into the physical body, we identify with the body and we forget our true self. So with that, we dive into matter, we dive into the world, we dive into life, and we completely forget who and what we truly are. And this construct is meant to do this. It's truly meant to do this. This is why we have amnesia. When we come in, we don't remember. Um, you guys hear me talk about, <coughs> sorry, about remembering when I was um, in the higher realms before I was incarnated. I, I had some of um, my, my experiences with the Lord. I had my whole life when I was a little kid. He was my spirit guide, my invisible friend. And I really do think he's an aspect of me. So um, with that, those experiences were visions that I would have when I was a child using my ability to connect with this beautiful being and literally just hang out and have conversations. And uh, when I was three years old and I went to church and he told me not to tell them that I could talk to him and not to tell them what I knew because if I did, they would tell me that I didn't hear him and that I couldn't talk to him. And it was just my imagination. And they, he said after a while, I would believe them. So I was like three years old and I was like, I will never lose this connection. And it was everything in my heart and soul. I meant it. And with that, I was able to keep it. So we really do manifest what we think and feel about. And he was always the best person in my life. He kept me safe, gave me good advice, was so wise and so kind, taught me things in a way I could understand as a three-year-old and evolved with me as I evolved. Very patient, loving, beautiful being. So the other experiences like uh, seeing myself come into my mom's womb and, and not wanting to come into the womb of my mother um, that happened doing trance work. It's called journey work. And actually, um, this was even before I knew journey work. And we were doing, actually, we were doing a polarity protocol at um, my school at Southwest Institute of Healing Arts. <clears throat> That's here in uh, Tempe, Arizona. Any of you guys who, who are interested in learning any of these modalities, fabulous school really wonderful place. I learned a lot there and I learned uh, what my gifts were. So I didn't even really know. So beautiful experience. But as I was going to school, we learned many different protocols of healing. And a lot of my uh, degree, I have a secondary uh, license in polarity. And I fell in love with this work. It's energy work. And you, you get into like a light trance and you just go into kind of a meditative state and dig into the body. You literally dive into the body. And through these practices, that's how I saw myself coming into the womb. I've had many profound visions doing this work. And that's how I saw my contract. 
that's how I got to see um, a lot of things. A lot of things. Things you can't even... Some of these things are hard to put into words. But this is what all of you can do. All of this is inside of your own mind and inside your body. <laughs> your body's a map and it, and it takes you into the universe. The, the universe is inside of you. And it, and it feels like you're going out. So when you're, when you're traveling, it feels like you're going out. But everything here is backwards. It's inverted. So you're actually going in. But it feels and looks like you're going out. <clears throat> and, and fear not about going outside of your body. It, it's scary because it doesn't feel normal. Um, but normally, uh, when you travel in trance, it feels like you're just using your imagination. So you don't even kind of feel it. It's just like you're just using your imagination and you literally connect and travel and start to go. So trust, trust what you see, meditate, close your eyes, focus on what you want to see, let your imagination run, but babysit your mind. If it runs into a, a train wreck or a ditch or a, a past trauma or memory, when you're creating, don't let those enter into the mind. Only let those enter into the mind when you're focusing on healing and clearing trauma. So there's certain times that you want to bring these files up. Then there's other times where you want to say, no, take a back seat. You get to talk later. Right now we're manifesting and I'm creating well. And that vibration does not suit me because it doesn't feel good. So anything that doesn't feel good, remove it. You have to you have to feel good. Another thing too, when you create what you feel about, you bring about. So the most important part is when you want to create, feel good. You must feel good because you will create what you vibrate at. So you're manifesting with intention the vibration that you're currently sitting in. So what you're sitting in is what will show up. So everybody talks about raise your vibration. Basically, it's just the simplest thing of shifting your thoughts from a negative field to a positive field. And those vibrations are all easy. Joy, laughter, um, bliss, uh, friendship, just just anything that brings you peace and joy and happiness. Yoga, meditation, anything. Anything that keeps your vibration into a state of homeostasis, which is balance. So that's what we're all looking for, is balance. So this video is getting a little bit long. I love you all. I just wanted to kind of give everybody a little bit of a run through of where we're at, uh, what we've come to discover with this wonderful book, and just remembering that we are more than our bodies, that we are immortal, eternal, spiritual beings of light and love and the power of creation is what we are made of so with that love God with all your heart and soul and remember the best part of God that you can see while you're in this in this reality is number one the mirror your reflection you are the closest aspect of God that you can see because you can only see parts of creation because creation is too big for any one of us to fully see. So what you can see is you and that is an expression of creation of the highest order. And if you could see what was making your flesh body emanate and animate you would drop to your knees in awe because that is your angelic self. So I love you all. I will talk to you soon and I will read more later. Have a wonderful day and favor, joy, and bliss fill you to overflow. Talk soon. Bye-bye.